100 million to spend on a center back. We've got a massive decision to make. Last episode, we sold Rudiger. We're left with a 79 rated Mingueza. And as much as I like him, we need a world class defender if we want to win the Champions League. Yes, you're right. Is it Edemili Tau we should go for? Is it Marquinhos? Is it Delict? Options are plenty, but only one can be signed. Huge decisions to be made in this episode. And also, let's not forget the Champions League draw will happen in this episode. We're probably going to play a few group stage games as well. La Liga, though, we need to start picking up wins. It's been an awful start to the season. It's a big episode, guys. We're going to be wrapping up the January transfer window, making that center back signing, and play all the big La Liga and hopefully Champions League games. If you're enjoying this series, you know what to do. Drop a like, subscribe, and let's begin. Press conference to kick things off and expect all the questions to be about, you know, the defender signing. It's it's the big thing right now. Okay, I said ages ago, Militao would be a good option. And now he's in his prime and he'd be insane. What a replacement. Plus, could we can Chelsea who we could face in the Champions League. One more thing about Militao. La Liga experience. He's played for Madrid before. He knows what it takes. Might be a bit expensive and out of our budget. Or might just fit in. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. We'll only find out when we do eventually sign him. But he's stats look so convincing 98 sprint speed 83 acceleration that is such an upgrade over Rudiger. he'll be so rapid so strong oh, I'm, I'm very tempted now Marquinhos was the other alternative but the thing is I've used Marquinhos a lot before I feel like Militao is the man uh, it's, it's a tough decision we'll have to just wait and see next one about Matthias De Ligt. might be a great option since he's young and high rated last episode I didn't mention De Ligt, but I kind of do want to sign him because I've used him so much in career mode Marquinhos actually haven't used all that much. Uh, Militao as well. So I kind of prefer those signings. Delict's probably out of th the contention, you could say. Varane, I've just got him here. I don't even know why, but I don't think I'm going to sign him. And Araujo is sadly only 83 rated. So for me, the real choice between Militao and Marquinhos. Oh, finally, a question not related to the centre-back thing. Where's the youth academy guy who was 14? Pretty sure. There you go. Iñaki Palacios. He's still in our academy, by the way. The man with the pony tail and all. He's 16. 60 dupe overall. 73 to 81 potentially. He's basically finished. Don't know why we have him here. We'll keep him here, I guess. But yeah, he, I don't think, has much of a future, though. I mean, his stats are, like, pretty sad. I'm gonna be honest. So, yeah was a weird one, man, last episode. I, I don't think anyone particularly performed well, but Unai Simon kept us in both games and got us points. So probably him. So there you go. Unai Simon wins the first player of the episode award of season four. I don't think the draw for the Champions League group stages has been made yet. Interesting. We'll have to wait on that. Anyways, our job now is to secure that centre-back signing. We need to make it happen and do it right now. 100 million to spend. Last episode, of course, we signed Alfonso Davies quality signing in my opinion I think it was it was needed and we got it done our defense will be insane plus the added center back that we're bringing I think we should be sorted to win the big trophy so the decision though is the tricky one Militao or Marquinhos I feel like we can't go wrong with this Militao is a bit faster you could compare that and see a lot faster I'd say and Marquinhos I feel has just got the more experience with him but if you've noticed every time we've signed one of the older players it's a hit and miss whether it works out or not but when we sign a player in his prime it's always worked out let's say Rashford and yeah so I think that's why I'm gonna stick with Militao let's first see how much both are gonna cost us let's just see what we'll have to pay to get Marquinhos from PSG because I'm still it's up in the mix for me you could say 85 million for Marquinhos I just want to see what PSG come back and say wouldn't even be affordable they want 115.5 million we can't afford this 113 is the maximum we can go but what about the wage We'll have to counter with, say, 92 million and see what they say. They're not willing to go down from 115. We literally cannot afford Marquinhos. That's something I didn't expect. What about 98 million is my next offer? We need to keep money for wages as well. They're willing to accept 103. What about flat 100 million for Marquinhos? Oh my god, will that work? Yes, it will. So we can afford Marquinhos. It'll basically drain out our entire budget and we'll kind of struggle to potentially renew contracts. So it's a bit of a tough one whether we do this or not but let's see how much Militao will cost us I reckon Militao will be in the same range because we are paying for the fact that he's like four years younger than Marquinhos but 
Hopefully, there'll be a bit of a discount as well. His starting value is about 75 million. So let's start off with 73 as our first offer. What's Chelsea gonna say? That's where he's playing right now. Their counter is 101. Surely we can negotiate this down as well. Let's offer 82 million as our next one. Thomas Tuchel, come on, accept this. Well, they want 100 million. Okay, if I if I propose a transfer fee of 85 million and I go in with a sell-on clause of say 15%, are they gonna approve this? They still want that 100 million. You're kidding me, man. What about 92 million? We'll still have money for contracts then. And that works. I think I know where I'm heading, guys. I feel like Thomas Tuchel's valuation of Militao looks a lot more attractive. It's so difficult to choose, but you know what? I just have a feeling Militao in his prime got the experience of playing in La Liga. He's the one I want to bet on. So yeah, we're going to do this. Militao is the one we're going for. All right, the squad role, of course, crucial. There's no two ways about it. It. He's going to be the man for us at the back. A four-year deal works for me, as I've said before. This could be the last season of S2G Club, the football. So just putting it out there. No release clauses. Well, we want to keep him for this season and beyond. We'll give him uh, the same salary. Seems like too much. We'll give him 200000 flat and just see if he'll be willing to accept that. It is a downgrade and he's willing to accept the pay cut to join us. That's my man. Millie Dow has been signed on a pay cut from Chelsea. I love to see it. That's a massive signing. I'm hoping he's a massive success because I want to win the Champions League this season and we need Militao to be the man. And there you go, boys. It's been announced. Edem Militao is one of our own. Looks amazing in game. Just look at those stats. 98 sprint speed, 94 jumping. Like, his, his stats are nuts. I did notice one problem with him. It's his work rate. He's got a medium defensive work rate. Surely, though, we can work on that with, like, a stopper development plan or, like, a defensive centre-back. I think stopper works best for him. We'll do that. That's that's going to get the work rate sorted soon. Number three looks good in him as well. That's it, boys. I guess we're done with transfers. Like, for this season, I think. Don't think I need to sign anyone else. We're putting Militao right in there. That's going to be the team we're rocking for this season. And I've got big expectations. I want to win the Champions League with this team. And let's hope we can start off strong. Yeah, put Mark in your ass. He got his hopes all up. But yeah, we're not signing you, mate. Sorry, we've gone for Militao. Yo, that's a good offer for Casas. Well, I don't want to sell him. As I said before, he's one of the players I want to keep on till the end because I just enjoy using him. Well, trans window is shot. We've made our signings. Time to focus a bit on La Liga. We're going to sim this game and we need to actually get a win on board. So I'm hoping with Militao and all in our backline, that should help through the quick sim games. And there you go, it does. Look at Alfonso Davies scoring for us. Rashford brace. You'll have to see it. Next up, Hetafe. We won our last game. I'm expecting something similar here as well. There you go. Gavi and Bowen scoring for us. So, a couple of crucial wins in La Liga. Now, this is what matters the most. Champions League group stage draw inbound. It's time for the Champions League draw, folks. And let's get into it. Who are we going to get in our group? Let's see. Starting off with Group A. Chelsea, Leipzig, Raha in Kiev. I reckon Chelsea and Leipzig should get through. We've then got Liverpool into Ajax in the same group. I feel like Liverpool and Inter always find themselves in the same group. City and Madrid. Okay now. And this is our groups, folks. We've got Spurs in it, Lille in it, Zenit in it. Okay. This is going to be an interesting group. I think it's going to be a three-way battle between us, Spurs and Lille. But our game between Spurs, well, we're going to play them today. That's going to be a ton of fun. That's an interesting and different Champions League group. Barca United in the same group as well. We've got Bayern Napoli, Rangers there, then Roma Dortmund, PSG, Villarreal and Wolfsburg and all in the same group. Okay. Well, I guess here we go. Starting off our Champions League campaign up against Spurs. I'm, I'm very keen on using Militao in his first actual game for the club. That should be fun. Back in the Champions League, we need to start off the group stage strong. This Spurs team looks a bit weak, man, without Harry Kane. They've still got Son, though, and he's going to be dangerous. First Champions League game for the season kicks off now. Last season, round of 16 is where we had to bow out this season. Nah, I want to win this. Okay, Militao, that's an interesting challenge. Worked out really well for us. And here we go on the attack. Presser looking to fire this one for Rashford. Davinson Sanchez with one of the most crucial interceptions I've seen. Wow. Now, it's this new guy. I've never heard of him. Coeta, is he, is he like a big player or something? Maybe a region. I've never heard of him, by the way. That should be simple for Davies. No, Gallardo had to come and help out. Wow. What a ball, though, from Gallardo to Navarro. And that could start a counter-attack for us. Here goes Gavi. 
I need passing options. Presser. Can't control it. We still have it with Marcus Rashford here. Back playing in England. Not really because this game is being played at home in Spain. Yeah, completely ruined that attack. We've got to do better. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Oh, they're going to score. They're going to score. They're going to score. Heung-Min Son. Oh, that's not the start we wanted. Spurs get the first goal of the night in the Champions League. It's, of course, Young Men's Son. I don't think we've won a single game this season. Like, we've played two games in the last episode, drew both. Now in the Champions League, we're off to a disaster. Maybe the problem is you. Right, now we need to see more of Rashford. He releases it for Gallardo. Sliding it for Presa. This is his chance. You give Presa that kind of space. He's, of course, going to score yet another goal for him. And this time, it's in the biggest competition in the world. Champions League goal for Presa. Celebrates with the boys. 1-1, one, one, we're back in it. Good pass for Rashford. Back for Alfonso Davies. We know how quick he is. Looks for the cutback for pressure. We might still score. No, how do we not score there? What? Seriously, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? First of all, Alfonso Davies is an animal down the wings. The cutback was smart. They almost scored an own goal. The keeper saves it. I thought Presser was going to get the rebound. Instead, he catches it. Unbelievable. Emerson looks for that pass inside. Los Celso. Son. Unai Simon has just saved us. A massive couple of points there. Unbelievable. Every episode he does this man. Crucial saves in crucial moments of games. Why is Rashford taking the set piece though? Well, it's it falls back for Gallardo. Maybe a finesse shot from distance. He's going to try it. Oh my God, Francisco Gallardo. That is a potential goal of the season contender. One of the best goals I think we've scored. Certainly the best in Gallardo's career. Club captain, legend, leader. That's the man who's just scored that. Look at that finesse shot. Off the crossbar and in. As perfect as it gets. Unbelievable from Francisco Gallardo. Look at the way the ball moved. It was kind of central, but the, the dip was just inch perfect off the crossbar and in. And we're taking away a win against Spurs to start off the Champions League. What a moment. Full time, boys. That's a big Champions League win to start our season. You'll love to see it. Gallardo, what a moment. Gallardo scores that goal and his rating goes back to 84. I swear his rating is just fluctuating between 83 and 84 at this point. What a moment that goal was. We've now got another La Liga game to fire through. This season, we're going to kind of put La Liga on the backseat by simming a fair few games. Because I kind of want the focus to be on the big one, guys. Of course, you know it. The Champions League. Where's Abde? I can't find Abde. Where's he gone? Yo, he was surely a part of our squad. I'm, I'm pretty sure I recalled him back from his loan spell. Oh, I forgot to do that. Well, I'm pretty sure I did. Well, we'll do it now, I guess. Recalling Abde back because I kind of want him to be like our first, like a backup winger. We'll put him on like a development plan. Oh my God, his potential's kind of in the mud, but still, um, because I want to make Jared Bowen a center forward. It'll take three weeks, but it'll be done soon. So there you go. Abde's back in the side. We can use him to sim this game against, of course, Raya Vicon. I probably won't do that because, yeah, we will keep the players that are fit. We will play DePaul. We'll play Fran Garcia. We'll keep the back line as is. I won three points here against Vicano. Can we get it? Yes, we can. It's 4-0. What a result. Our next La Liga game we are going to play though because it's against Real Sociedad. They are sixth in La Liga with the same points as us. I think I'm going to have to give Gallardo a bit of a rest for this one. So we will play DePaul. Also, I want to see Abde in action. So we are going to play him instead of Navarro. We'll have maybe Casas be the captain. That's fine. And that's how the team's going to look like for this game let's go oh we might need to change the kits might be a perfect opportunity now we will have real sauce that wear the away kits that's a lot better i'm yet to win a game in la liga this season so let's change that update back from that loan spell at wolfsburg i think it's worked out well for him guys because he's gone from like a 73 overall or 72 actually a 77 over a season so i think it was smart to do that de paul i'm so glad we signed de paul like whenever Gallardo stamina is though we've got a player who's of similar caliber to just replace him, and it's so effective having that. Here's the Paul on it, just talking about him. He might get involved for us. Here's uh, Presser now. How do we not end up scoring from that? We still have the ball though with Gavi cleared away. We should have scored off that chance. Maybe I should have just gone for goal with Marcus. Oh, Militao, so good there. And now that could start a breakaway. Here goes Marcus Rashford. Can he bring it inside? Yes, he can. Looks for Presser. That's got to be a goal. There you go. 
This time we don't mess things up. Rashford and Presa linking up as we make it 1-0 against Real Sociedad. Lovely goal. Oh, they've gone through. No, Militao. Militao has taken him out. That's got to be a red card. That's going to be a red card. No, his first episode for S2G Club, the football, and he gets sent off. But he took one for the team, guys, but... I think we would have conceded if not for that Militao challenge. Let me know in the comment section if that was the right thing to do there or not. Let me know. I'd love to know your opinion. Have we messed ourselves up by doing that? Only we'll know at full time. They've got a free kick now and a chance to score 24 yards away. Oh, they're going to try some sort of a stupid set. P shots taken. Are you kidding me? Wait, what? The ball went in, but the ref's given a penalty? Yo, what's happening in this run of play? I am confused. The ball came off Tomiyasu's arm. That looked like his chest though. I don't know what's happening with this game. We've given them a chance to equalize anyways. Yo, Oyarzabal, please miss. <laughs> oh, nice, Simon has made the save. Unbelievable. Yo, the last five minutes in this game has just been nuts. Penalty, free kick, red card, penalty saved. What is happening? Unai Simon is just goated, man, honestly. Still 1-0 in this game, but we could still concede. Can't allow that to happen. We need to make changes, man. Oh, they've got a chance to score too many. After all that, Unai Simon concedes through his legs. I don't get this game. I really don't. I really don't. It's one all. First thing we're doing, um, I think we're going to have to sacrifice up there, I guess. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That's how I'm okay with that. We will bring on uh, Mingueza. Play Mingueza center back. That's what we'll have to do. I think one thing we could also do is move Gavi slightly here. That, that might be smart to do, you know, just... And maybe have Bowen play instead of him. Now, I think the energy of Gavi would be useful there. Let's do that. Playing Gavi on this right side, the man has just been running all game long unreal he's kind of acted as a winger when we needed him to as a midfielder complete performance from him as the ball breaks through this is his chance goes for goal off the post and in we get the lead of this game being a man down how about that rodrigo de paul making that run from midfield we've seen him do this so many times for us and there you go that's another goal for the argentinian lovely finish with his weaker left foot off the post as well Let's go. We're in the lead. If we can win this game, oh boy, would that be insane. Oh, that's a good ball for Presa. That is a very good ball for Presa. We could be scoring another nope. one. It's a cheeky chip, but it's above the crossbar. I shouldn't be making mistakes like this in a game like this. No. Chance for him again. Oh, that was really well done as he puts the ball back in. Tries to do so. Rashford heads in and it goes in. A cheeky header from Marcus Rashford. Presa setting him up. 3-1 now. How on earth have Real Sostad bottled this being a man up? Like, I don't get it, but hey, our team has really fought through. I think the tactics we used after we went to man down, which is perfect. And that's helped out massively. I think we're winning this now. Oh, Pressa. Pressa's looking for more. Pressa's looking to make amends yeah. on the last chip. And he makes amends on that last chip. He shows how it's done. Real Sosna towards the end of this game just crumbled. And we were there to take the opportunity. Pressa scores yet again. A lovely solo effort. Beating a couple of defenders and then... So satisfying. Javier Pressa. I think by the time the series is done, he's going to be my favorite player in career mode. Hands down. Like, so satisfying to use. Full time, job done. We managed to beat Real Sociedad in La Liga. We had to fight through this with all the red card drama. But let's go, we did it. And this confirms my theory. If you go a man down, your team actually start playing a lot better. This game makes no sense, but we move. Next up in La Liga, it's Sevilla. And they're nowhere to be found in ninth in the league. Well, well, well. That's interesting. And that means I'm going to take my chances and sim this game. By the way, Militao does not play because the red card. So what's going to happen here without Militao? We still get a win. Presa and Navarro scoring. Perfect. We get a 72,000 offer for Schmidt. I think I'm just going to accept it. He, we've used him, I think, in the first season for the fair few games but ever since then he's just been enjoying a free salary how much does schmidt get paid guys i'm actually now wondering let's see schmidt he gets paid 20 grand for literally doing nothing are you kidding me well let's take the money and free up the wages we're gonna smash through another champions league game against zenit what i'll do is uh make a few changes we'll play galvan we'll play de paul we'll also maybe give minguez a run out front garcia there you go we'll sim this game against zenit because i reckon they're gonna be the team that everybody beats in this group 
as evident by this result, a 2-0 win. What we'll do, guys, is we'll smash through a couple more La Liga games. So I want to play this one against Lille in this episode. Cartagena are one of the worst sides in La Liga this season. This should be a cakewalk, no lie. Gavi scores a brace and helps us get that. We also pick up a 3-1 win against Real Zaragoza. Oh, look at that. We can now convert Jared Bowen into a center forward, which we've done. So, yeah, he's gonna... We can still play him on the right. That doesn't really matter. But he's gonna, of course, be the official backup to Presa, who goes up to an 85 overall. You love to see it. Well freaking deserved. A win against Lille could put us in a very good spot to just secure round of 16 qualification on match day three itself. Let's do it. Oh, it's time to put the alternate kits, the third kits into good use. I can't wait for this. Okay, Lille have got Jonathan David. Might make things interesting. Muki Elliott, Demiril, all decent players. Let's see what happens here. We're playing our way in France. Let's see how this goes. And Haller as well. Lille have assembled a good squad. Bradaric looking for the ball in. It's a good one. Jonathan David winning the header. Oof, we're lucky not to be a goal down. And we just give it away to Jonathan David who just shoots and goes for goal. I cannot believe how stupid of a goal that is that we've just conceded. Outrageous, man. Outrageous. I make a mistake, give it away. Jonathan David just flicks it home like it's nothing. Like the, the audacity to do that. Look at this. Unbelievable. Fair play, I guess. That's all I can say. Oh, looks to bring it inside. Looks to bring it inside. Back in. Oh, that was not the cross we needed. We wanted to find Presser there. We're still pressing, but Lille have got us mapped out completely well. And look at the open space. Militao has a job to do again. And he's been exposed to finally we managed to, you know, force them backwards. And we survived that attack. But Lille... They've got us covered. On a creative level, I think we need something extra in the attack. And even though Bowen, I want to play him center forward on a few different occasions. For now, I want him on the right side. That's all the changes I'm going to make. I think, yeah, that's what we need. Let's see. Have I made a mistake converting Bowen to a center forward? Because at right wing, he gets a boost. So, I don't know. I think I've messed up in that sense. Oh, God, it is so well there. And I see Rashford. Need him to make the run. And I need to time the pass perfectly. Okay, it wasn't the perfect pass. But Rashford can make it count. Brilliantly done. That's wonderful from Marcus Rashford. Just pushed the defense behind. Took his moment. Cut inside. Bang. We're back in this game. 1-1 against Lille. We had to really work hard for this. But there you go. We're back in it. A win, France. It's 1-1. Presser evading the challenge and driving the ball forward. We could be in the lead in this game. As Presser looks to play it for Rashford. First time strike. How close would that have been? To another potential goal of the season. What a volley. What an attempt. But just wide. Oh, look at how close it was. Ah, Gavi seeing Bowen through and he could be end up scoring here. This is his chance. Jared Bowen picks his spot and he misses. That's the difference between you could say Presser and Bowen. One we won. Presser never disappoints. But as Bowen, don't I feel like he's always got that miss in him? Alfonso Davies. Looks for Gallardo again, who's been on point in this episode. He misplays the pass there, but in general, like, assists, goals, he's doing it all in this one. That's full time here against Neil. We're going to have to settle for a point for this. The Champions League group here is well and truly alive. There's a lot more drama to come, I guess. And look at that Champions League group. We're top of it, but Lille are still in the fight. Spurs are still in it. A lot can happen. Today's episode, player of the episode, I'm thinking Callado. The goal he scored was tremendous. And in general, the assists and everything's got to be him. Next episode, we play Atletico Madrid. Real Madrid, probably Spurs or Lille will fit those games in. Exciting games coming up ahead in La Liga and the Champions League. We've made our transfers and everything. We just got to find the optimum way of playing with this team and we'll keep growing if you're enjoying the series drop a like subscribe and i'll catch you guys for the next episode millie dow was the signing of the episode and let's hope things keep going well peace